Hey guys, welcome in. Hey Paul. Hi Paul. Hello. So today I decided to do something different. I've got a rotisserie chicken and a mashed potato. For role-playing snacks? Yeah, I had this realization. So a pizza is normally $20, right? But the rotisserie chicken is 15 and the potato was like a dollar. You could just go box pizza if you're trying to save money. No, I don't want to do box pizza. Are you crazy? Well, why not get a box pizza and then some fresh vegetables and you throw them together and then you've got like a high quality box pizza. Well, then why not just make a pizza from scratch at that point? Because then you can't call that a fancy box pizza. Honestly, I was expecting candy given the theme of the game. Well, how much candy can you eat over the course of a few hours? Depends on the candy. Personally, I'm going to advocate for no candy. My character is a dentist terrorist. He works for a group called Peace Teeth. They say that we're radicals, but they won't say that when they're dead. All right, all right, let's get started. Okay, so the premise of the game is that you are all espionage experts of some type, mostly corporate, but world governments are also keenly interested in the famous Charlie Chonkless Chocolate Factory. There they produce the most amazing candies that anyone has ever heard of. Like marshmallow peeps that actually come to life and then scream and die when you bite into them. It's amazing. And delicious. But how does he do it? Nobody knows. In fact, no one has ever seen going into or out of the factory. The closest thing to that are the trucks that come in to take the candy away. And they also receive shipments of cardboard boxes that are placed in a shipping bay and then left. The chocolate factory has no windows. There's basically no parking. They have a giant privacy wall that keeps people from looking in, and they don't allow visitors. Through intense corporate lobbying, they secured a special deal with the government where they're allowed to self-regulate, meaning they don't have any FDA inspectors. But the product they produce is on a cutting edge far beyond anyone else's technology. You guys have been hired by whoever it is you work for to break into the Chonkless Chocolate Factory and find out how they are making what they make or to disrupt or destroy that production to give his competitors a chance to catch up. I am giving Clean Teeth a fighting chance! Teeth are the gateway to your soul, and also your face! Okay, that's Elvis, the fighter for Clean Teeth. Mason, what are you all about? They call me Todd. James Todd. I'm a full-time alcoholic, but on the side I do wet work for the British government. Sometimes they send me on special assignment. My mission, having chosen to accept it, is to gather photographic evidence of the production methods of the Chonkless Factory. I have a license to kill, and a hankering for a martini. All right, and Lowry. Well, I'm a freelance ninja. <laughs> okay. Just a freelance ninja. Is that it? Well, it's a hustle, you know. I mean, like, it's hard to find employment. You gotta sort of talk people into ninjas. So this mission I'm doing entirely on my own, self-employed. And once I gather together something that I could sell, I'll sell it. You know? Okay, so just working for yourself, that's fine. Yeah, it's going to the highest bidder. Okay, so a ninja, though, are we talking like black clad, katana, smoke bombs? Black clad, yes. I've got some modern stuff in there. You know, Naruto's really popular with the kids. So I wear a headband with my business card in the top for advertising, right? Because I'm freelance. You got to advertise. Right, right. Also, I couldn't get ninja shoes that fit really well. That's a specialist deal. So I kind of have like sandals and socks. But they're black socks. <laughs> okay. So like black flip-flops with black dress socks? Yeah, but the rest of it's it's all black. It's kind of like modern black clothing. So like black jeans, black t-shirt, black gloves, and like a baklava. Okay. So so you're not like cosplaying as a ninja. You're yeah, just like- Yeah, yeah. Modern ninja. Okay. So do you have a sword or- Well, most of my stuff is kind of like made in the garage. So I do have like a hunting knife and a grappling hook that I made. Okay. So we've got a government funded spy and then whatever clean teeth can afford. Teeth piece. Teeth piece. That, you know, that would never fly as a brand. That is so hard to say. You have to slow down and think about it. Teeth piece. It's part of our branding. Slow down. <laughs> okay. And then some guy who's working out of his garage, which, you know, uh, I- I guess a lot of uh, a lot of private investigators. Yeah, I mean, you, you make do with what you've got. That's what I'm doing. Okay, it's a legitimate career. I'm a ninja. Okay, great. And those are our guys. Well, you know, Paul, we all have to start somewhere. I personally was found in a bar. All right, so describe to me exactly how you guys deploy to the outside of the Chonkless factory. Ah, well, I am a master of disguise. I go in dressed as a construction worker. Right, well, correction, you approach the outside perimeter dressed as a construction worker. Okay, yes, I go to the front gate dressed as a construction worker. I suppose I'll just go around the backside, and then I've got like a grappling hook in my watch, which I'll just shoot up over the gate and then climb over. Okay, high budget climbing. Ah, oh, man. 
that's totally no fair. Okay, I'll come up behind Mason. After he goes over, I'll throw my homemade rope grappling hook over the fence. Immediate feelings of inadequacy unfold. Elvis, how are you getting over the fence? Is there a buzzer to ring in? No. They don't even have a buzzer on the exterior? No, the trucks come in at specified times. Uh, I suppose it wouldn't do to go in when there's like a bunch of people loading and unloading trucks. Okay, well actually, let me narrow this down. There is only one way into the building. There is a single door at the loading docks. That is a massive fire hazard. Yes. However, Charlie Chonkless himself has shown up at City Hall to complain about being harassed by the fire department. And after several lawsuits and enough lobbying, he is now no longer required to have more than one door. Or any windows, or a fire escape, or anything. Okay, so it's a multi-story building with one door, and nobody goes in or out. Yes, guaranteed death trap, but he's got an exemption. Okay, so legally it all checks out. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, I, I get, can I just, like, shimmy up the fence? Do you have climbing skill? Yes, I do, actually. Then yeah, I'll let you have it. You just climb up the fence, and then climb down on the other side, and you're in the inside perimeter. All right, perfect. Just walk towards that one door. It's the only door. Is there a camera looking at the door? No. They have one door, and there's not even a security camera on it. <laughs> what is the point of this? Why would you have only one door and then not watch it with security? Like, that would be so cheap. What can I tell you? There's no security cameras outside. You are free to just walk up to that door. As far as you can tell, you don't see a thing. Well, all right. I'll just stroll on up to it like I own the place. I'm wearing a black suit and a bow tie. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, you seem to be lost. Are you looking for a party? Everywhere I go is a party, sir. I don't suppose you could direct me to the entrance. Oh, here it is. I suppose I'll just let myself in. Oh, uh, uh, well, I'm I'm with construction. I'm with the sewer. I I need to go in personally. I have reason. I, I don't know if... I, do, do you work here, sir? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Oh, great, great. Well, you're exactly who I'm looking for. See, I have some permits and stuff that need to be signed. It's all very technical. It'll take a while for me to explain. If I could just get into your office. Oh, yes, of course. Just follow me. I'll, I'll show you to my office. A pleasure to meet you, by the way. My name is Todd. James Todd. Does Mason smile at any time? I mean, I guess. Okay, I have an eidetic memory of teeth and dental records. I would recognize your teeth anywhere because I have photo-perfect memory of all teeth that I have studied in my lifetime. I have a massive mental database of teeth. Do I recognize the teeth of this man? <laughs> uh... What does your character say? I mean, I maxed out teeth knowledge. I have as many points in this as I can have. Uh, well, you know what? He He's a very blatant spy. So, yes, you've studied the profile, the teeth profile, I suppose, of James Todd. <gasps> You're James Todd! Yes, I just said that. Thank you. As in James Todd, the famous serial killer. Uh, you must be confused. I have a license for serial killing, which means that legally it's not serial killing. Also, I think you have a case of mistaken identity. James Todd is a very common name. Well, James Todd may be a very common name, but your teeth are very unique. You got braces, but you know what they didn't correct? You still have half a centimeter turn on your left incisor. Oh, do I? Get your fingers out of your mouth. You can't fix it now. I see. You're very astute for a construction worker. I... I... Yes, I am. I'm... I, yeah. Mm? 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 Tell me, do you look at a lot of teeth as a construction worker? Well, uh... You, you know what? You know what? You're probably not the James Todd I'm thinking of. Let's not worry about it. Oh, very fine choice. All right, well, I'll go ahead and take you to my office, Mr. Construction Worker. Lowry, where are you in all of this? I'm just hiding around the corner. Come on, hurry up. Get out of here so I can go in. Okay, I'm gonna say, freak accident, not a reflection of your skill. You just happen to take a step back and you kick a can. And of course, these other two men are spies. They're trained to look out for the unusual type of thing. So they hear that can, they turn, and then they see you just before you can duck back behind your corner. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh my God. Of all the amateur crap. Hey, who's that back there? We can see you. Ah, uh, um, uh, ro, ro, just a pigeon. Oh, it's a pigeon. Mr. Construction Worker, you know teeth like the back of your hand, but you don't know pigeons very well. Sh should I? Is that something construction workers know? Go ahead and come out, Mr. Pigeon. I won't shoot you. I promise. <sighs> okay, step out with my hands up. Are you telling the truth? Because if you lie, I'm going to be shot, but I'm also going to be really mad. I'm telling the truth for now. But why don't you tell me why you're spying on us? Um, because it's weird that you're going to the Chonkless Chocolate Factory. Nobody does that, you know. That's a fair point. 
And what are you, paparazzi? Oh, oh, well, actually, I'm really glad you asked. Just walk up casually and hand them both a business card. I'm actually a ninja, freelance. You know, ninjas are coming back right now. It's like trends, they run in cycles. Ninjas are on the upswing, I guarantee it. Oh, exactly how much personal information do you have on this? All of it. Phone number, home address. I work out at my house, see? Lowry, ninja for hire. You don't look like a ninja. Where's your karate gi? Well, a real karate gi would be very expensive, and I don't know if you know this, but black is black. I don't have to wear a karate gi to blend in with the night. Well, can you really call yourself a ninja just from blending in with the night? Because a lot of people blend in with the night when they wear black. Well, I do also know how to throw sharp objects and stuff. I have a bag full of nails. I could throw them at you if you wanted me to demonstrate. I mean, not at you, maybe like at a training dummy or something. You know, this James Todd guy's wearing a black suit. Does that make him a ninja? Uh, technically, if he identifies as one, then yes. I more like to think of myself as a lady killer. Well, I think the proper term for that is hitman. Well, a metaphorical lady killer. Unless, of course, I've been hired to kill a lady, in which case... I thought you just said that you weren't James Todd, famous serial killer. I say a lot of things. Show me. Okay, so you're James Todd, famous serial killer, apparently, and, and you're... Who, who are you? Um, construction worker. Okay, and I'm a ninja. And are you guys gonna go into the chonkless factory? Yeah, there's a bad sewer leak outside. I really gotta talk to someone. I, I gotta deliver some messages and everything. Okay, and you? Well, I work in the building. I was about to show this man to my office. Okay. And, um... Do you guys mind if I practice shadowing you? I'll just walk in behind you and you guys can pretend not to notice me. Well, normally we don't like to do shadowing at this place of work without advance notice. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you were going to shadow someone in the espionage business, wouldn't the best thing be to, like, do the paperwork under the table or not at all to hide the fact that you're shadowing them? Well, I'd never thought of that. Well, okay, who said that I was doing espionage, okay? Hey, by the way, could I see your face? Just your teeth a little bit. You know, I can't trust a person whose smile I can't see. No way, man. No, he does make a point. If you're going to shadow a spy, the best way to do it would be unofficially. Yeah, whatever. I just feel a little bit more comfortable if I could see you smile just once to know that you have a sense of humor. No, the mask is integral to being a ninja. I just gotta see the teeth, okay? I just wanna What's see them. What's the matter with you? He just gave you a business card with his name and address it's, it's on it. It's just numbers and letters to me, okay? I have to see the I'm teeth. I'm take off my mask, man. That's ninja rule number Why one. Why are you doing this to me? Without teeth, without a smile, you can't even say you're a person. Well, if I take off my mask, I can't even say I'm a ninja. Your okay. smile lets people know you're, who you are! You're trying, you're, you're, you're smile you're trying, is, your smile you're is humanity! To, you're trying to take away my identity as a ninja. All right, all right, pull out my gun. Everyone just calm down. I've got a gun pointed at your faces. Do you feel calmer? N no. Well, you should. I've de-escalated the situation with my gun. Look, I've got a proposition. Clearly, we all want to break into the chocolate factory. Let's put down our guns and forget about our smiles for a while. You cannot ever forget about smiles. I mean, not forever. Okay, let's let's preserve our smiles by not blowing a hole through them. Okay. Give me one good reason. Because we we can combine our efforts. All right, we'll all work together. Intel on the chocolate factory, and then and then at the end we can we can exchange notes. Or maybe you could kill us and, and take all the notes for yourself. You know, right? If 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 one of us aren't up to scratch. No, I'm I'm not really here for notes. Well, I am. We can negotiate this killing each other for the notes at the end, but I'm willing to work together. Well, at least I know that one of you is a human being. I got my eye on you, Mr. No Teeth. I have teeth, okay? They're just under the mask. You already gave me your address! Just let me see the teeth! Point my gun at Elvis. He said he doesn't want to show his teeth there, construction worker. I've got a gun pointed at you. You want to argue? Yes, I cannot work with a man who doesn't have a healthy smile! Well, could you at least try to respect the gun? I will not compromise my morals! Okay, point the gun back at Lowry. I'm sorry, it's not working on him. Could you show him your teeth? Aw, oh, man, come on. Just because I'm the guy who's afraid to have a hole blown in his face, I've got to be the one who compromises? Well, one of you has to. Gunpoint diplomacy is really one of the few things I'm good at. <sighs> okay, fine, but I I'll, I'll cover more of my face when you look at my teeth, okay? I cover up my eyes and then show my teeth. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, clear- I remember you now. You haven't been to the dentist in like two years. Uh, how do you know that? Jeez, man. It's in your records. You see this receding gum problem? You're not flossing, okay? All right. You, I knew you were going to be on thin ice. 
You're passable. Okay, fine. Does that mean you're going to work with me? Oh, yeah, but you better not touch any of the candy in that place. Your teeth cannot handle it. I would not do it if I were you. In fact, I'm pretty sure I saw a cavity back there. Can I look again? No, I only did it once, and that's because this James guy had a gun pointed at me. All right, fine. I mean, if it's, it's going to be a gun now, but it'll be a drill later. It's totally your loss. Oh, my God. So are we ready to go in? Are you ready, or should I point the gun at him a little harder? I suppose I'm ready. Well, then, after you, gentlemen. Is the door locked? Nope, you can just let yourself in. All right, just go in through the front door. Hey there, Mr. Lowry. I just want to say I'm sorry. You know, I point this gun at a lot of people as a way of resolving disputes. You'd be surprised how many people just uh, test me. Then I have to shoot them usually, you know, because otherwise I would look stupid. Uh, uh Thanks for not making me look stupid back there. No, no problem, I guess. There's a good man. And in we go. In you go to the mysterious Chunkless Chocolate Factory. You guys enter the factory through a set of double doors into a sort of airlock space. That is, there's doors behind you now and doors in front. The doors behind you close and you press on. When you open up the second set of doors, you find yourselves looking at essentially that scene from Willy Wonka where they're walking around the candy garden. I assume you guys have all seen that. What, the movie? Yeah, Lowry, the first movie with Gene Wilder. No, I actually didn't see that. You didn't see Willy Wonka? No, Elvis, I did not see Willy Wonka. But it's a classic, dude. I mean, Lowry, how do you not see Willy Wonka? Because, Mason, my parents were concerned it wasn't appropriate for kids. Oh, because of all the murders? Who doesn't really murder them, Mason? I mean, they're all fine in the end. Yeah, he puts the grape girl in a squisher and he just squishes the berry juice out of her. Well, it was more like they were worried about the... Sexual undertones? The what? Okay, I didn't see the movie with Gene Wilder or the one with Johnny Depp, but I did read the book, so bear with me. As I understand it, Willy Wonka is a single adult man who lives alone with a bunch of other little men, and then when he gets lonely, he lures children to his factory with candy. Oh. Did your parents not see the movie? Because he's, he's like killing the kids. It's more of a slasher. Yeah, than yes, a... Paul. I believe they would call that a snuff film. I would say that you're ruining a good childhood movie, but you know, they had that whole scene in the tunnel with like the centipedes crawling on the lady's face or whatever. Again, I have no idea what you're talking about. I guess I can kind of see where they were coming from. Okay, well, Lowry hasn't seen the movie, so I guess I'll explain it. All right. So, it's like a big park, but it's made entirely out of... Uh, Well, in this case, it's actually not candy. It's slick and kind of plasticky, and it is a little bit sticky. But tempted as you are to reach out and taste a leaf off of one of these sort of plasticky-looking trees, you find out it's not sugar. It's some kind of bitter stuff. Ugh, blah. I suppose sugar wouldn't make good building material, but what do you suppose this is? Go up and give a leaf off the tree a lick. Again, it's kind of sour and a little salty. Um, well, I don't know what to make of this. Oh, I know exactly what this is. You know, in chemistry, they used to taste to tell whether or not something was acidic or not. If it's sour, that means it's acid. You know what that means? That's a byproduct of the soda that they sell the kids. That is tooth poison right there in your hands. You think that soda produces a solid waste product? Are you a soda chemist? I don't see your PhD. Well, of course, I wouldn't just carry it around. I'd put it up on my wall in my office. Well, that's ridiculous. I carry my dental license in my wallet at all times. Well, what if someone steals your wallet? I have multiple copies of my dentist license. People ask me to prove I'm a dentist all the time. It is ridiculous. I have no idea why. Well, that said, I don't see why you'd make an entire garden of waste product. Seems uh, expensive. Well, clearly Charlie Chonkless is insane. I guess he is a shut-in. Well, I'm just going to take a few photos. Uh, could someone eat one of the leaves and then make a face like, bleh, I hate this? Sure, I suppose I can do that. Just remember to sharpie out my eyes. This is spy work, you know. Oh yeah, no, it's not my first rodeo. I got it. Get out my camera. Eat a leaf and make an ugly face. Ugh! Oh, sure, just put that right back in your mouth right after I just told you why it shouldn't be in there. You don't even know what it is. You're a crap spy until you try it out. It could very well be toxic. You might have cancer now. That's the same thing they said about U-235. I barely noticed a thing. You're not swallowing it, are you? Well, I will, just to prove a point. It's bad enough it's touching your teeth. You don't have to swallow it. Well, apparently I do to prove to you that this is non-toxic. I take a bite. You bite into it. It is sour. It is kind of awful. You swallow it. It burns on the way down. There, see? 
delicious. This, I am pretty sure, is how man invented chocolate. Did you know that's a poison too? And a downright delicious poison. Are you sure you don't want to try some of these leaves? I think the taste grows on you. No, we are all of like five minutes in on this entire spy work and we're already distracted by scenic foliage. I mean, in fairness, like it's all indoors, so that is pretty notable. No, he's right. We're supposed to be looking for secret formulas. Uh, I mean, I was told to look for, like, genetic sampling and stuff like that. You know, I'm just going to take a couple of leaves. Mm, maybe some trimmings, I don't know. Paul, are there any apples or, like, seed pods or anything on these trees? Yes, in fact, it looks like the majority of these trees are sweet gums, so they have those little prickle balls. Get out a plastic bag and put a sweet gum seed in it. Sweet gum seed acquired! Ba 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 ba. All right, look around. What else is around here? Well, down at the far end of the room, there's a sort of man made canal of molasses. It drains off into a grate. The grate is too thin for you to fit through. It's open on the other end. Otherwise, it's mostly just various garden stuff made out of this horrible sour crap, including a few benches and a lawn gnome. As you're inspecting, though, you notice that there's teeth marks on a lot of this stuff, as though something has been chewing at it. And you can follow the chewing. There's also a lot of scuff marks, especially over in that corner. Which, as you approach, you realize that what you at first thought was a large boulder is actually some kind of sleeping creature. It stirs a bit without waking up, kind of stretching out, and it appears to be some kind of large canine, but it's about the size of a grizzly bear. It's gray and has a few weird protrusions on its back which flutter as it kind of stretches, and it goes back into its sleeping position. Can I see this thing's teeth? Well, it's sleeping, and its mouth is closed, so not at the moment. So we're basically looking at a big, fat dog. Something like that, but this thing is definitely a lot more reptilian. What the heck is that? Well, my friend, it's a big, fat dog. I can tell you haven't seen a lot of big, fat dogs. I mean, yeah, but normally they have fur. No, this one's like one of those uh, Mexican cats, what do you call them? Chihuahuas. But they're all the same. When you've been in spy work long enough, you know that the one way to get rid of a dog is to throw a steak. Like a slab of meat? Do you have that on you? No, normally we get briefed on the dog ahead of time. I think I've seen one about twice this size in Siberia, though, not to worry. Well, it is clearly some kind of guard dog. Just to double check, does anyone have like an elephant gun on them or anything like that? Because this this animal is huge. It's fine. One shot between the eyes will bring it down. We're talking modern firearms here, friend. You have a small pistol that fits in your jacket pocket. The big reptilian dog stirs. It stretches out and yawns. You can see massive fangs on this thing. Are they clean? They are not. They're yellowed. They clearly haven't been cared for very much. You're not sure who's in charge of this dog, but they are not brushing its teeth. Oh my god. Get out my toothbrush. Uh, hold on there a minute, friend. Yeah, uh, where are you, where are you going with that? I live by a code. What kind of code is there for dentists? First, to help, or at least do no harm. Second, to brush your teeth. <laughs> Can I see your dental license just real quick? Okay, fine. Pull out my wallet, throw my license at him. Here, take it. I got like a hundred of them. Why does everyone always want to know if I'm a real dentist? The big dog creature kind of blinks. It looks like it's waking up. Leap up a tree, hide in the foliage, become one with nature. Uh, 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 jump behind a rock. Just stand perfectly in the open like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, let me get hiding rolls from Lowry and Elvis. Here we go. Hiding. Okay, so the dog wakes up. Kind of gets oriented, sees Mason, and then jumps. Oh, God, it wasn't expecting you to be there. When it lands, its hackles are up, and it bares its teeth. It starts to snarl. Shoot it. All right, you just pull the trigger and shoot this thing in the face. Give me a damage roll. Take that, you ugly son of a reptilian bitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, you shoot it, and then the bullet kind of glances off of its skull, and then it immediately lunges at you. Unfortunately, pinning you to the ground, and it starts to bite at your legs. Oh, oh, gosh, hell, oh, your instincts are terrible. You should have gone for the throat. Elvis, run out with the toothbrush and start brushing its teeth. Hold still. This will be over faster if you don't struggle. This reptilian dog looks bewildered and terrified and is trying to avoid you. Stop fighting me. Lowry, throw a smoke bomb from the tree. Smoke bomb. Poof, the smoke bomb explodes, enveloping everyone in a dark cloud. Now no one can see. Oh, well, thanks a million, Mr. Discount McNinja. This really helps. Mason, you're up again. Okay, take the grapple watch and just fire it. Whatever it hits, activate. Pull me away. All right, you point your watch blindly and fire the grappling hook. It hits something and it pulls. Give me strength on the grappling hook compared to this creature. Let's see. Here we go. 
All right, the creature tries to hold on, but winds up gripping only your pants for just a second, and then you're pulled away out of your pants, clear down the way, into the molasses river on the other end. She took my pants! Actually, can someone check if it's a lady? I have a joke. It's dark, I can't see, I'm not even sure if I'm brushing the face! Okay, Elvis, you are right there touching this thing. It, it goes for you, it bites, uh, you can feel it actively trying to catch you. It misses, though. Uh, okay, on second thought, I'm gonna go with your plan. Kill the thing and then I'll brush the teeth. First check if it's a lady. I don't know. I have a funny joke, but it only works if she's a lady. Run towards Mason's voice. You run through the garden and reach the edge of the molasses river. Lowry. Just hold tight. Nothing's noticed me yet. Everything is fine. The lights go down. You guys look up and there's an observation deck looking over this entire area. A small group of tiny four-armed men troop out in perfect marching order and then look down at you guys. They start to dance. What the heck is going on up there? Mason, you're up. Shoot blindly into the cloud. Bang! Bang! You're pretty sure you're not hitting. How much ammo do you have in that thing? How many times did I shoot? Was that three or four? I wasn't counting! Well, I still have a ways to go then. All right, the creature stumbles out of the cloud of smoke. It is coughing and sputtering. Its nose seems to be pretty sensitive. Uh, All right, hop down out of the tree and then get to another tree closer to Mason and Elvis. What are you doing? Just stay in your tree! I want to be close to you guys, though. The little men in the glass observation box are doing a synchronous dance. You can't hear what they're singing, but they're singing something. I think they're just making fun of us now. Would you please get out of the molasses? It is mostly just sugar in there. You know, I don't appreciate you bashing me around. You are pantsless, and you are laying down in molasses. Actually, Paul, how deep is this molasses river? Yeah, am I, like, drowning? Uh, no, sorry. It's only, like, knee-deep. Okay. Uh, You are lying pantsless in a molasses river. Clearly you need help. I need help. Obviously you're the one who needs help. It is not a mental illness to be passionate about your work. If it seems like mothering, then so be it. I'm sure that mothering is what made you this crazy. That is not true. My mother was institutionalized for reasons not statistically correlated to my problems. The beast aligns itself and then lunges towards Elvis. Abort dive out of the way. And you dive into the molasses with Mason, away from the bite of this creature. Ah, uh, just look at what- look at me, oh my god! Lowry. Get out my hunting knife, and then leap from the trees onto the back of this creature. You jump onto the back of this bear-like creature, and then plunge your little hunting knife into its back, only to find that its body is well insulated from these kinds of attacks, because creatures of its own size are meant to fight with it. Well, I'd say this is how I expected to die, but really- Shoot the thing again. The bullets just bounce off. Either conserve your ammo or aim better. Look, you have anything besides a toothbrush and, what, schizophrenia to contribute to this? Well, for your information, I have a few bricks of C4, but I am saving them. Larry, the creature bucks you off of its back, you fall into the molasses river, and then it stops at the edge and barks at you guys. Okay. Does it go in after us? No, it barks and it makes lunging motions at you and then kind of backs up and then approaches again and then it paces around and it barks and it barks and it barks. Okay, and there's just little men up above us dancing and singing a song that we can't hear. Yep, that is pretty much the size of what's going on right now. It it knows about the dangers of sugar. It won't go in the molasses because it cares for its teeth. Maybe it just doesn't like to get sticky. No, it's intelligent. It's an intelligent life form. Pick up a gob of molasses and then hurl it at the creature. It springs back and cries, then doubles barking even more angrily, but now scared. Up, 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 up! Molasses hurts the thing. It hurts all of us. Have you not been listening? I mean, it's physically melting the thing's skin. Maybe its skin is made of enamel. That would explain why your bullets are just bouncing off. I thought enamel couldn't grow back, which is why a cavity is forever. Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, I know that. I didn't mean enamel, I meant dentin. So your theory is this thing is made out of pure dentin, and sugar just kills it outright. My theory is that this creature knows that molasses is bad for it, and it is averse to it. All right, and what's your theory on those dancing little men up there? Oh, them? I'm with you. I think they're making fun of us. So it seems. Paul, try to shoot one of the little men. Ping! Looks like the window is reinforced, and the bullet bounces off. I already hate this place. Everything's impervious to my gun. I'm really more worried about the fact we've been compromised. We ought to bug out. Well, be my guest. You think you can outrun that dog? Mm, maybe covered in molasses I could. Well, I'm not going to get any more covered in molasses than I already am. The two of you can feel free to escape without me. Okay, hold on. Lay down, roll around in the molasses, get good and covered in it, then climb up out. Does the dog try to bite me? No, it kind of hovers around you, makes lunging motions at you, barks, up, 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 up. 
but does not actually make contact with you. Okay, here I go. Splut, 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 splut. Go back to the door. Try to open it. It's locked. All right, I can pick a lock. Funny thing about that, you go to pick the lock and you discover that it is magnetically sealed. Oh. Okay, go back to the river. Splot, 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 splot. Well, what did you find? It's a death trap. One way in, no way out, Roach Motel. Oh, <laughs> they think they've trapped me, but little do they realize- You came in with explosives. I have several yet, yes. Well, they'll probably yes. take action if they see you setting that up, so don't go throwing it around. Let them think they've won. Well, considering that the door seals behind us and this dog is clearly supposed to rip us apart, they've kind of won. Now, I've been cornered by big dogs before. There's always a way out. Paul, are there any ways out? Well, if you go against the flow of the molasses, the pipe that's pouring the molasses down here is open. Okay, and that's only like a knee deep. Yep. But there's a grate at the south end. Yep. Well, clearly the north end's a trap. I'm going to check the south end. You head down to the south end, and it looks like even if you could cut the grate away, the molasses is going pretty much straight down at a 90 degree angle. Well. You know, not that I want to be pessimistic, but I would like to point out that these pipes are really huge for the amount of molasses being pumped. I bet that pipe either gets smaller or leads into a fire pit or something. Yes, I suppose we should assume we're being set up for failure. The question now is, do we go along with it, or do we check with Mr. C4 here? Well, as it so happens, I would be eager to set up the C4 now if this is as far as we can get. Even just blowing up the entrance sends a message. But if we could, I would like to get closer to the heart of the factory. Well, I think if we go the north way, we will get a little closer. Well then, onward, into an obvious trap. No way forward, but into the mouth of the sugary beast. You guys know that there's no other ways in or out of this building, right? That we know of, friend. I'd put money on underground tunnels for sure. Yeah, definitely. Underground tunnels. Oh, God, I hope so. I know it for sure. Onward march, men. March against the molasses you go. You trudge your way down the molasses pipe. The distinct smell will haunt you for the rest of whatever this experience is to you. Oh, I've been through worse. You know, I once chased a man down a wastewater line. I don't think you did. Those things are only like, I don't know, a couple inches wide. It was a Russian wastewater line. It was huge. The Russians make a lot of waste. Well, I can't prove you wrong. Maybe it was a composite drain. And what are you, the master of international pipelines? You're barely even sure what a ninja is. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay, harsh, man. I didn't question your profession. Well, you may not be, but I question it every day. If not for the alcohol and the loose women, I wouldn't still be in this business. Hey, uh, just asking for a friend, but where are you meeting the loose women? You mean you haven't met any? Well, let's just say hypothetically that I haven't met any yet. Well, have you tried doing one of those missions that they have to cover up because it'd be an international incident? Mostly they refer to what I do as terrorism, which is a type of international incident. Ah, see, there you go. What you've got to do is ride on the back of a truck shooting at Russians, and then do the whole thing by shouting, I am working for America, I am working for America. That kind of thing gets you all the girls. I am surprised they are into that. You know, I feel like, um, like women are more about... Uh, Embroidery, I know, but yes, they're very into shooting at Russians. Well, I was thinking sanity, but I guess... I haven't met any girls either. Well, you're just wearing t-shirt and jeans. Try wearing a suit. I can't afford to get molasses on a suit. Well, maybe that's why you can't find any women, because you can't afford to get molasses on a suit. While we're speaking about it, you said that you think women should be sane? Uh, I I assume that's what women were looking for in All a All women I've ever known have been in Shane. For example, this one girl. I remember she had this thing about prying up other people's fingernails. She collected them. Had a night in the shack with her. When I woke up, all my fingernails were gone. Best sex of my life. I guess a guy could do worse. That's right, he could. And I have. I've slept with women I didn't even want to sleep with. But I'll make love to any woman for the love of the mission. You know, this one time, I pulled the tooth out of a shark because the tooth was rotting. And sharks can be very coy, but I think we may have had a thing. Fascinating. You should have jumped on that one. I would have. What about you, Ninja Man? You got any saucy stories? I, well, this one time, this girl on Tinder almost went on a date with me, but then she canceled it at the last minute. Tentilating. Yeah, I, I tried to reschedule and then she ghosted me. Well, you should have gone for it. I would have. You think so? Absolutely. Have you ever considered that you might be gay? What? what why? 
Why would I consider that? Well, you have a hard time putting things together with women. You know, that's a classic sign. He's right. You know, if you've never jumped on a shark or a woman, then you've never been a man. I have been a man. I have so been a man. I, I have, like, I have nudie pictures on my computer. We all do. It's called the internet. Yeah, but I mean, like, I've seen them. Yes, we've all seen them. It's called the internet. I'm just saying, I went down that road. I had to stop and seriously think to myself, you know, like, am I not dating women because I'm not interested in them? Is there something wrong with women? Yes, positively. Look, guys, I don't I don't think that's why I'm having trouble dating women. Could could we just focus on the mission, please? Fine, but we call this a Freudian diversion. Yeah, really weird that you'd bring it up and then just try to distract us from it like that. Oh my god, I'm not the one who brought it up. What does come up is the end of the tunnel. The molasses tunnel curves straight upwards at a 90 degree angle, and immediately to your right is a single door. Why they need a door that leads to the molasses tunnel, who could say? Hmm. Well, this seems overly convenient. Perhaps just as convenient as Lowry's divergence into another subject. Could you please be a little bit more concerned about the trap in front of you? Look, if it's a trap, I've still got ammunition in my gun. I fired it uh, six or seven times, so I've still got plenty of ammunition. Oh, I know what it is. It's your teeth. It's always your teeth. Teeth are the most attractive thing about a person. I don't want to talk about my teeth. I don't want to talk about my sexuality, Paul. I push open the door. The door opens to a stairwell. It goes up. You know, we should be careful. Lowry might be right. There could be a trap up there, and it'll lock us up as tightly as Lowry is shut in the closet. And who knows if it'll be equally difficult to escape from. I am not in the closet. Okay, you've got the gun. Can you go up ahead? I understand. You'd like to look at my firm buns. No, I want you to take point because you have the gun. More of a biceps man, I see. The guns. Wink, wink. <laughs> I just want to go up the stairs. Uh, that's all right. I'll go up the stairs. I take point. Thank you, Elvis. You are welcome, but in exchange, I'd like to see you floss a little more often. Yeah, sure. I promise anything. Anything to just get through this like professionals. Lowry, let me ask you something. Are you making money on this? In theory, if I find anything to steal. Then you are a professional. As am I, and so is Elvis. Oh, my God. At the top of the stairs is another door. You open it up and then find yourself in a massive industrial coop. There are birds stacked up as far as you can see, lining the walls and organized in shelves. But it's not chickens. These birds are like the size of golden eagles. And in fact, they are probably some kind of eagle, and they are solid gold. Like gold the material, or gold the color? Gold the color, but like an actual metallic gold color. It appears that they're all laying eggs, and then the eggs are funneled away to somewhere else in the factory. You watch a bird set one down, and then roll, 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 down it goes through a tube, assisted only by gravity. Fascinating. You know they have a setup like this at the Putt-Putt Golf. You play Putt-Putt? Yes, women go crazy for Putt-Putt. Did you not know that? Oh, well, uh, well, no. But I was just curious because I'm in the local Putt-Putt League. When's the last time you went? Well, just last Thursday, with a woman who had her DNA sliced with Sasquatch. She does wet work for the Chileans. Oh, I think I remember her. Marge? That's the one. She's a Chilean spy? Between you and me, keep it on the down low. I never would have guessed. A woman that hairy, though. Yes, all the hairy women do wet work. They really do. I wonder what is up with that. It's a big no-no to discuss around the office, but that's because you don't want to be killed by the hairy women that do wet work. Guys, we are in a room full of golden birds that are laying eggs for who knows what reason, some kind of recipe... We're trying to figure out the secret of the Charlie Chonkless factory. Obviously, obviously, these special eggs, that, that's a big all deal. All right, all right, keep your pants on. Try to do a little networking, why don't you? Larry, I don't suppose you've ever done putt-putt. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not really into putt-putt. I kind of, I don't get it. How do you not get putt-putt? I mean, every course is different. How do you practice well enough to be, like, really good at putt-putt? It's not about how good you are at putt-putt. It's about socialization. It's the same reason that people golf. Okay, well... You guys catch up on the latest putt-putt golf stuff. I'm going to go take pictures of these birds. Fine, you do that. Paul, is it possible that I could get one of these birds out of the cage? The cages don't look that sturdy, but each one is padlocked with a tiny lock. Ah, well, I have a lock pick. Shoot the tiny lock with my gun. <laughs> okay, uh, give, me, give me an attack roll on this. Here we go. Padlock, don't move. All right, blam! You get that padlock at point blank, but also hit the bird. It flops over dead instantly. Oh, uh, shoot. Well, uh, there's there's plenty more where that came from. Oh my god, what did you do? Well, it's not what it looks like. The bird shot itself. You shot a bird? 
Why did you shoot one of the birds? It's, 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 it's fine. I'm sure this happens all the time. It happens. You think that they shoot the birds all the time? Yes, they get uppity or, or disease or something. You've got to old yeller them. Hold on. Stand back. I am a form of medical professional. Yep, that bird is dead. Aren't we supposed to be keeping an element of stealth? They'll never know who shot this bird. A spy broke in and shot the bird. Well, that's not what they'll think. That's too stupid to believe. Oh, my God. They'll think one of the employees shot the bird. And they'll have a team meeting, and everyone will have to sit through a three-hour meeting. Oh, my God. In a way, we've already done some sabotage. That's for you, Elvis. Thank you. I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more substantial, though. Hence the C4, remember? Maybe they won't even notice the bird is dead. How would they not notice the bird is dead? There's a giant Because gunshot. it's just a freaking bird in a cage. What does it do? I, does it pay taxes? Does it have a family? Are they going to notify the family it's in the eggs? Yeah, well, Look, the eggs are yeah, going well, through the tube. They obviously care about the eggs and the quantity of the eggs coming out of the bird. Do you see a counter coming out somewhere? They're not checking how many eggs this bird I lays. I that somebody comes by. I mean, this, this must be a very inefficient system. Paul, follow the tube. You follow the tube down the line. It jogs to the right and then disappears through a wall. There's a doorway on that wall. Okay, see, all the tubes go somewhere, so if, if this bird stops laying eggs, they're obviously going to know that the bird is dead. They're not going to know the bird is dead. They probably cut the thing's head off when it stops laying eggs, and then they shell it as chicken pot pie. Haven't you seen Chicken Run? Chicken Run was a fictional movie. Also, it was set in England. They probably do things differently here. What do you think? England has more efficient chicken farming than America? Well, I assume that they have more regulations. Oh yeah? Well, name one. Well, for one, they protect the privacy of the chickens. What privacy? Like their maiden name? Or of the people who buy the chickens. When you buy the chicken, you can't just, I agree, and then give up your information. Well, there you go, Lowry. They protect the privacy of the chickens. No one's gonna know this chicken is dead. Oh my god, they, they obviously know. Paul, open the door and go through to the other side. What's on the other side? You open the door and find this massive tangle of tubes leads into a horrible mechanical monstrosity. There's a giant machine in the center of this room with arms reaching out everywhere. There's conveyor belts receiving the eggs. They shuttle the eggs on down to an incubator, which briefly incubates the eggs. The eggs hatch. Chicks emerge and then are shuttled along. The machine reaches down, picks up a chick, inspects it with a giant red eye, and then sets it down on either the left or the right side. The chicks on the left side are trundled away through a little slit in the wall. Who knows where they go? The chicks on the right find themselves locked into a machine, where a bunch of giant syringes come down and then inject them full of frosting. They swell up and then they're wrapped up tight, which somehow freezes them in place. It's Charlie Chonkless's famous screaming marshmallow bird. Oh my god, it's like Dr. Seuss meets poultry farming. Shut the door. Let's focus on this room with the golden eagles. It's much happier. No, no, wait, that machine looked like exactly the kind of thing I want to see for. Yes, no, I'm sure. I'm sure that's a very expensive machine, but let's just... Think of the chickens for a little while longer. Look at all of them. I'm, I bet they're just thinking about staging a daring escape. And one of them's an American rooster. Got them all full of that American can-do spirit. I mean, the screaming marshmallow chicks always freaked me out, but, but I had no idea they were living creatures. Yeah, big golden birds. If yeah. we steal the secrets to this, companies all over the United States are going to be doing exactly this. Exactly this. Yep, that's industry for you. That lady in Chicken Run that was trying to kill the chicken, she, she will be nothing compared to this. Yes, well, they wanted to put a face on the villain for the movie, you know, so you had someone specifically to hate. They could have put the colonel from KFC on there. You can't hate the colonel, that's statistically impossible. That's why he's their mascot. We cannot share this information, we cannot let people know that, that, that this is how you get the screaming chickens. Well, Lowry, you're a professional, right? I mean, in, in theory... If I ever made money off of this job. Right, well you can't make money in this kind of business without occasionally spilling a few doomsday machinery secrets to the North Koreans. Have you done that? Well, not working blueprints, no. I mean, the ones I gave them blew up in their faces, I'm pretty sure. Okay, but, but, but this, is, this is like, actually, this is, this is horrible. Now that I think about it, though, the North Koreans, boy, they would probably kill for living birds that turn into marshmallow creatures. You know, they're all starving over there. You're imagining giant North Korean factories full of birds stuffed with frosting. Well, I'm just saying that's where there might be some money in it. You're self-employed in a way. It pays to be creative. I think we need to establish some ground goals. I just want you guys to know I'm here to end Sugar's War on Teeth. I am also not for other people knowing how to make these horrible abominations. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm with the tooth guy. We should not share this information. Exactly. We should blow it up and kill everyone in the factory. I uh, can't. Can't we, like, hack the mainframe, or... Well, what programming language does their mainframe use? I, I don't know. 
Maybe we could find one of their computers. Blowing a building up is way faster than hacking. I don't even have to crack any codes. Lowry's right on that one. If we're gonna go for sheer destruction, a bomb is the best way to go. Problem though, pull my gun out. I'm not here for pure destruction, so if we're at a crossroads, I'm going to have to resort to pure destruction. <sighs> okay, that is not okay. fair. Hey. I do not have a gun. Well, you should have brought one. How about you, Ninja Boy? I brought a knife. Well, there's a saying about that in guns. It, it, I believe the saying is that you're stupid. You can't kill us. You're all out of ammo. Fire my gun in the air. Bang. No, apparently I'm not. Well, that was your last bullet. No, I think I've fired off, I don't know, ten times or something. I've still got plenty left. Have you been counting? Because I have not been counting. I don't even know what kind of gun that is. Do you know anything about guns? I'm, I'm not really a gun guy. I, I, that's why I wanted to be a ninja. Okay, well, Stop yeah. whispering over there. Empty out your pockets. Do you have any guns? Do either of you have any guns? I don't believe you don't have guns. Empty out my pockets. No guns. No guns. Well, that's that's just against the rules. You have no guns at all. I was really going more for just the in and out with the C4. But what if you alerted them? How are you going to shoot your way out? Oh, uh, well, normally, like, I strap the C4 to my chest and then just, like, stay there. And I say, let me go or I blow myself up. Does that work? I don't know. I've never tried it before. I usually work with stealth. I try not to be seen. You're new at this. You don't even know what you're talking about. Neither does he. Yeah, but he's got C4. He must know people. Yeah, I do know a guy. See, he knows a guy. He's a real spy. I know a guy. I know the hardware store guy who sold me the knife. It's not the same, Lowry. Yeah, come on. This just looks pathetic, dude. You're pathetic. I'm, I'm the only one who knows the art of stealth, and I'm like, I'm a 20th okay, century Okay, shut up. Ninja. Shut up. I'm done arguing about it. I'm the only one with a gun, and that means by default I win. Don't you two look like idiots now. All right. March yourselves back into that room with all the machinery. I know what we're going to do. Open the door. Well, I hope it's shoot that machine or let me set up all my C4, because if not... I'm afraid not. I'm going to ask you to hop up on that conveyor belt with what I presume are the other cocks. The conveyor belt where they're filling birds with frosting? You want us on that one? That's right. It'll be over quick. You'll feel a pinch and then you'll be full of sweets. That is the absolute last way I want to die. Uh, come on, bullets would be much more merciful. I'm trying to conserve ammo here. I, I've still got, I don't even know how many shots left. I've shot maybe 10 or 12 times. Well, you're going to have to shoot two more. To kill you both, I'm probably going to have to shoot, I don't know, four or five more times. People don't die in just a shingle gunshot. Look it up. Okay, but frosting. You're going to watch two adult grown men be filled up with frosting to death before your very eyes. Son, I once watched a man be melted alive by a volcano. I told things to my therapist that caused my therapist to see a therapist about PTSD. Hey, uh, if this turns around, who is your therapist? Because mine keep quitting. Okay, please. Please, I I've changed my mind. We can sell all the secrets to the, the Soviets or the North Koreans or whoever it is you're working for. I'm not working for the North Koreans, you idiot. Well, I'm not going to stand for being killed with sweet- Hey, look over there. At what? Turn around. Ah, grab him! Throw him on the conveyor belt! Ah, oh, you jerk! Run over and help, Elvis. I got his legs, I got his legs. Thrash and kick. Oh, you teamed up, you believe in teamwork just like the communists, oh no! Well, with the combined might of two versus one, Mason, they throw you up on the conveyor belt. The machine actually reaches down, quickly grabs you, an eye comes down and looks you over, and then it sets you back down on the conveyor belt you were just on. As you try to get up, the arm holds you down. The syringes full of frosting come down, but you are far too big and thrashing around far too much for them to actually gain any purchase. So the entire conveyor belt stops, everything freezes up, and then the machine pays very acute attention to the three of you. There's no alarm, but there is a flashing red light. The machine reaches down, grabs you each one at a time, and then picks you up and carries you all over to a chute. Oh, you idiots, you see what you've done? We could have killed only the two of you, now we're all three going to die. I'd rather die in the trash than die full of tooth decay. Mom was right, I should have gone to trade school. The machine drops you each into the chute one by one. Down you slide into the abyss. Down you guys go, rattling down the chutes, zip, 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 clanging off the metal, until you land in something soft. Oof. And I guess, Lowry and Elvis, you land on something Mason. Oh, ah. ow, ow, oh god, I think I landed on your gun. Get off of me, you idiots. What is this, your first time going down a garbage chute? The room is dimly lit. You're sitting in mush. You feel something wriggling between your fingers. Ugh. Hop to my feet and turn on my phone light. What am I in? Looks like some kind of organic composting heap. And down below you are a bunch of gummy worms. When you stand, you realize that the floor is moving slowly. You're being sifted towards the other end of the room. Gentlemen, the floor is moving. How do you know the floor is moving? What if the walls are closing in? This is just like Star Wars. It is not like Star Wars. 
Yes, it is. I'm Han Solo, and you're Princess Leia, and he's Luke Skywalker. Now hold on a minute. Why am I Luke Skywalker? Well, I assume that you have some kind of spy sense for being a spy for so long. That's not the same as the Force. I'm the one who has a gun. You're the one with a knife. Jedis can use guns. Have you played the video games? Okay, but let's just get one thing clear here. I'm Han Solo. You're Luke Skywalker. I am Princess Leia, though, just to be clear. Yes, if you want to be Princess Leia. Okay, because they do become an item, Han Solo and Princess Leia. Okay, all right, Lowry, you're Han Solo, I am Luke Skywalker. That's not where I was going with this. No, too late, we're destined. No, we're not. Look around, is there, like, a way out of here? You guys appear to be in sort of a garbage dump. There's not a ladder out, but there is railing up above you. Okay, get my grappling hook, throw it up there, start climbing up. You know, Luke Skywalker waits for Han Solo to save him. No, he doesn't. Luke Skywalker takes his own initiative all the time. Wait, I thought we established he was Han Solo. Uh, right. I don't even know why we're doing this. Step aside. Start climbing up behind Lowry. You climb your way to the top and find yourselves in kind of a cramp room. It looks like it just mostly overlooks the garbage dump. There's a doorway. You walk through it, and you find yourself in sort of a furnace room, where it looks like they're cooking all the gummy worms that hatched in the compost. You know, now that I've seen the sausage being made, I'm not sure I'd eat a chunkless chocolate anymore. Though I won't say never, I mean, I have seen sausage being made otherwise. Honestly, I can't see how you'd see all this and still say, you know what, I'm gonna rot my teeth. Look, I like the screaming peeps, okay? They taste delicious, I'm not gonna stop. You never should have started, that's all I'm saying. Well, you never should have started telling me what to do. In fact, I'm gonna eat twice as many screaming peeps when we get out of here. If we get out of here, I don't even know how these rooms are connected. None of this makes sense. Well, if I've got it right, we should be back on the ground floor, possibly the basement. There are no windows on the building. How would we know that? Mmm, simple. Hot air rises. So, if we're in a hot room, then we should be higher up. We're in a furnace room. Well, then by my estimation, we should be on the top floor. We fell down, though. It was dark. You don't know that. Well, it was gravity. I mean, we had to. No. Just, just no? Look, no. I'm a spy. I know it. I... I I have anti-gravity shoes. Do you have anti-gravity shoes? I turned them on while we were falling. We fell upward some. You have anti-gravity shoes? Yes, but sadly, they're all out of batteries now, so I can't demonstrate. But trust me, yes, I have anti-gravity shoes. We're on the top floor because it's a warm room. That's basic logic. That's where we are. Well, I would like to be in a different room. Paul, is there a way out of this room? Yes, there is a door. You push through it. You enter out into a hallway. To your immediate left, it looks like there's a glass observation deck, which if you go out and look out of, it sees the room that you came into. There's that sleeping beast down below and all the artificial trees and whatever. I see, there you go. We're on an upper floor. Well, we climbed up from the molasses tubes and then we fell down, so we must have gone pretty far up. Paul, about how many stories tall is the Chonkless Chocolate Factory? From the outside, it looks like about three stories. It is wider than it is tall. Okay, so we must have gone up three stories and then fell down one story. Actually, we fell all the way to the basement, but then I turned on my anti-gravity shoes and we went up one floor. You're welcome. Well, I don't suppose you have any gadgets besides the anti-gravity shoes to cut through this glass and get us out of this place. What do I look like to you, Inspector Gadget? I mean, I don't know. How am I supposed to know? I mean, for know? your information, yes, I have lots of gadgets. So many gadgets. You have no idea how many gadgets. Well, then... But I can't show them off because they're all top secret. Oh my god, bang on the glass. I just want to go home. I regret everything about today. Hey, if you're really starting to hate this place, don't forget I've got a bunch of C4. Okay, blast the window. Get us out of here. What? But that's not going to do any structural damage. Lowry's right. We need to be thinking strategically. Also, we need to stop Lowry. As you guys are arguing, a funny-colored, four-armed little man turns around the corner and freezes. Abadi? Shoot him. Blam! You shoot that little man dead. Oh my god. No, I was worried I didn't have any more ammo. Several doors along the hallway open. Other little men poke their heads out to see the commotion. Why did you do that? It has a silencer. Fortunately, it never makes these things totally silent. Somebody spots the body. Ah! Oh! Dobu do! I'll go too fun! Run, just run the opposite direction. Elvis tears off down the hall. Okay, alright. I'm calling breakup on this. If I see you again, I'm gonna shoot you, okay? This is this is warning. Okay, thanks! Elvis turns a corner and is gone. Shoot down the hall a few more times. Bang! Bang! There's screams and the doors all close, several of them lock. Ah, Dobu do! Alright, ninja friend, now is the time when things get real. Come with me. Grab Lowry by the hand. Where are we going? I don't know for sure, but wherever it is, there's going to be a hot woman. That's how these things always turn out. There's always a hot woman somewhere. Come on. You guys tear off, and I assume a different direction from Elvis. Where are you trying to go? 
Just throw open a random door. What do we run into? Okay, you stop and you kick open a door. It looks like some kind of living quarters. You hear shuffling in a room further back. Uh, back there's either a hot woman or a hostage. Watch. Kick open the door. You kick open the door, and over by the closet, there's a little alien woman with four arms. She's in her underwear. She turns around and goes, oh, 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 God, I'm so sorry, ma'am. Oh, 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 hootin, 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 hee. Ah, well. All right, so Lowry, sometimes you'll be faced with adversity in the spy work. You know, you gotta, gotta make things work. Get out my breath freshener. <laughs> Freshen up my breath. <laughs> well, hello there, ma'am. You had me at Houtini. Grab her around the waist. Okay, she's like smaller than a toddler. She comes up to about your knee. Okay, kneel down and then grab her around the waist. Ma'am, I've been with a lot of women. And I have to say that by far, you're the most heart-stopping. I, I, I don't know if we have time for this, or, or if this is really the right approach for the situation right now. Listen, right after you kill a man, you've always got a raging combat boner. You've got to do something with it. Okay, that's... <laughs> This this feels like an unpleasant outlet that we are. The man's got urges that gotta be explored. No, okay, no. Talk out, out to our our for to talk. What to sweet? Ma'am, I know what I'm doing. Don't think you're not the first tiny woman I've ever made love to. Kiss her on the mouth. Okay, I'm this. I'm an accessory to a crime at this point. This is just vastly inappropriate. You hear a thump. You turn around and you see that another little man with four arms has just dropped his briefcase at the doorway entrance. He takes off his hat. Hotoku? The lady puts up her arms and she shakes her head no. The little guy points at you, Mason. Hotoku! Sorry, little guy, she's with me now. Stand up and pick her up like a small child. Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Now both of them are shouting, Hotoku! Then the closet opens and a third little person runs out of the closet. He's in his underwear and then everything freezes. Then the guy goes, <gasps> Oh, too cool! Talk dog! Talk dog! I see what's going on here. Don't, don't worry. I've got this all figured out. Shoot the guy in the suit. Blam! Oh, oh, Duke! Oh, Duke! Don't worry, ma'am. I've solved it. If it didn't get solved by shooting someone or, or making out with someone, then I don't know how to solve it. But I know how to solve everything. I'm a spy. Oh, no. Welcome to spy work, Lowry. You've just been introduced to your first major spy challenge. Now what to do with this woman? Talk. <laughs> well, the moment has left me. I guess uh, uh, I'm not making love to you anymore. Point my gun at her head. Now you're a hostage. Uh, 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 Mason, please let her go. My name's not Mason. I, I, I can't remember what I said my name was. Uh, just, just listen. Listen, Lowry. We're about to be overrun by these little people, and some of them might be armed with who knows what kind of weapons. I assume tiny little pistols. We're going to need a hostage. I mean, I mean, clearly, we need a way out of this. I, you know what? What if we just go hide in the air vents? What, like cockroaches? Like a, like ninjas, you know, stealthy. Ninjas didn't hide in air vents. Air vents weren't invented when ninjas were. Well, ninjas would have hidden in air vents if they'd been around when ninjas were around. Well, let's get a second opinion, ma'am. What do you think of Lowry's plan? To go to, oh, oh, to go. She's crying, Lowry. She's crying. That's how bad your plan is. She hates your plan. Okay, that is clearly not why she's crying. No, I'm starting to feel sympathy for her. I get it. I feel empathetic. Your plan is so terrible. I'm about to cry. Am I crying? Do you see the tears rolling down? All right, well, what's your plan? A small troop of tiny forearm police officers all barge into your room, practically tripping over each other. They brandish tiny little sticks, which they wave at you. Ok. Well, you've got to think fast, Lowry. Get out your knife. I'm not getting out the knife. They've got tiny sticks, Lowry. If you're gonna, when are you gonna use the knife? If not, to fight off the tiny sticks. They come up to my knee, right, Paul? I'm just gonna push past them. I'm gonna run out the room. Okay. They yell, stick, stick, and they beat you with the sticks as you run by. It hurts, but you know it doesn't really slow you down. Uh, uh, hold on, wait for me. Okay, you all stand aside, or I'll shoot the lady. They beat your knees with sticks as you run past them. Ow, ow, ow. I said I'd shoot the lady. Do not speak English. Sprocken the egg. I will shoot. No, forget it. Out you go. Elvis, you're running down hallways as well. What are you trying to accomplish? Gosh, this really fell off the rails all at once, didn't it? I let you off the leash. The countdown begins. Countdown to what? I, I don't know. Okay, well, I am just looking for something specific to blow up, like a generator or, I don't know, a load-bearing wall. I'm just throwing open random doors. I'm, I'm going to check. Hey! 
Okay, you open up a door and you see a, a bunch of like candy canes and there's a bunch of little guys with forearms. They're all striping these candy canes. One of them is hung upside down. He's wearing candy cane socks. His feet kind of curl over like candy canes. So they're using his feet as an example for how to make candy canes. Oh, I am so sorry. I'm looking for the power generator. Do, do you guys have one of those? Power generator tokum infinging. I'll just ask someone else. Close the door. Hold my C4 out in front of me. Okay, okay. Um, the center of the building. All right, start walking towards what I think is the center of the building and count out my steps as many paces as I think is the center of the building. I don't know, like a thousand steps. All right, you start briskly walking down the hall with measured steps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> Mason and Lowry, you guys have hightailed it down the hallways. You think you've shaken the fuzz. What next? All right, Lowry, so let me explain how this is going to work. Next stop is we have to find the control room. This lady here, she's going to fall in love with me eventually. She, she might resist at first. Oh, you, you think she might resist? Yeah, oh. she might resist at first, but eventually she'll learn to love me. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. I know about Stockholm Syndrome. Good, then you know that the way that we make her develop Stockholm Syndrome faster is, is by doing things that make her happy and alienates her from her friends and family and stuff. Does this happen at the control room? Or? Well, I personally prefer what I like to call the digital pet method, which is where you feed and dine the woman and give her lots of alcohol and possibly lovemaking until she comes around. Do you do this in the control room? That depends. Is there food and coffee and wine and stuff in the control room? I have no idea. What does the spy manual say about that? Normally, no. Normally, normally we would have some time to do the wine and dine beforehand, but we're in an enclosed space and I can't get out. Well, I'm surprised that spies are not more resourceful. I am being resourceful with the resources that I do. See this woman in my arms? It is a resource. Well, I'm sure that they have an employee break room or something with donuts. Ah, uh, Laura, you're a genius. No. A complete genius. No, no, First, no. the employee break room for donuts and possibly alcohol if they have it there. They won't. Why would they have alcohol in the employee break room? What animalistic company wouldn't? Most companies don't encourage drinking on the job. Well, not in spy work they don't. Come on, let's go. All right, Paul, I start kicking open doors looking for the employee break room. Is this it? No. Broom closet. How about this? Another bedroom. How about here? You know what? Maybe I'm stupid. They have bedrooms. They, they probably have... Like kitchens and stoves and stuff. Well, then they must have a pantry, like a grocery store full of dining and whining. Well, I mean, I guess that's true. Or then again, they might have some kind of central planning thing. You know, most of the women I hook up with are communist. It's the weirdest thing. Okay. You finally throw open a door and hey, it's an employee break room. There's coffee over there and some donuts and actually just a lot of candy, butterscotch. Bingo, here we are. Okay, all right. Now watch the master. Go over and get a donut. All right, and, and what do you do? You double click her and she eats the donut? Mash the donut into her face. She is not expecting this. Come on, eat the donut. Grab another donut. This is how you wine and dine women? This is how you do it when you're on a deadline. I mean, I envied that you were meeting women. I, I had no idea it looked like this. Don't envy things you don't know about, Larry. That's what I always say. Look, I don't think this is going to make her endeared to you. Yeah, well, you like sprinkles? Here you go. Here's another one. <laughs> I mean, she had a life before this, right? You know, like, this this cannot be better than what she was doing before. Well, she must not have been happy she's an adulteress. How about a long john? That sounds like something an adulteress would love. Yeah, but okay, but I mean, like... Okay, well, in your estimation about how long should this take? I've never done it so fast before. We'll go through all the donuts and see where we stand. Eat the donut, dang you! Okay, Elvis, you count to about a thousand and find yourself in the middle of a hallway. 999, thousand. Okay, all right. Get down on my knees and just start assembling the C4 there on the floor. All right, you go to work, tinkering with your C4, putting all the wires together. This goes here, that goes there. There's the timer. And then you hear heavy footsteps coming down the hall. You turn and you look up and it's actually a huge alien creature, some kind of lizard looking man. He's in full body armor. He stops when he spots you. He goes, hey, what are you doing? Uh, is that a bomb? Run, run away. Hey, hey. Ah! All right, back in the break room. Well, that's all the donuts. Let's see if she's uh, endeared to us yet. So, darling, would you like to tell us where the control room is? That doesn't look good. I don't think she speaks English, Mason. Well, that's also just a matter of Stockholm Syndrome. Sooner or later, she'll learn English. She looks like a little alien. I don't know if her vocal cords even can. No, just maybe Maybe what we need is uh, some coffee or something, a beverage, right? It's not spiked, but... Uh, I mean, yeah, nothing soothes the nerves like being force-fed coffee. Yeah, there you go. Calms me down after a hangover. 
Go and grab some coffee. Okay, that is probably hot. You are going to burn her to death. No, it's just like testing a warm baby bottle. You just pour a few drops on your wrist and... Ooh, ow. Oh, okay, it's hot. Yes, you're right, it's hot. Well, I guess we'll just wait for the coffee to cool down. Okay. Yep. Just here in the break room, we're just going to wait for coffee to cool to room temperature. I don't want to blow on the coffee. I'll get my germs in it. I feel... Like a little exposed. I mean, you'll feel exposed. She's probably feeling way more exposed. Look at her. She's not wearing any clothes. Tupu Corvin. Tupolfin. Yeah, Tupolfin. What do you suppose that means? I don't know. She's learning my language. I'm not going the other way. Well, you know, women in the spy industry must really put up with a lot. Oh, you've got no idea. Well, we'd be lost without them, let me tell you. Huh. You ever think about joining an agency? I mean... After today? Yeah, well, if you live, you're cut out for it. I, I don't know. The benefits are real good. Good benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, sorry I tried to kill you earlier. The door cracks open and a grenade lands in the room. Blam! It's a flashbang. You guys go blind. You can't see. You can't hear. Zing! Next thing you know, you're down on the ground. A giant lizard man is standing over you, pointing some kind of space-age rifle at your head. The little cops are rounding you up, they're handcuffing you, they've got your ankles, they've got your arms, then they pick you up, they drag you down a few flights of stairs, and then they throw all three of you, Mason, Lowry, and the lady that you kidnapped, into a jail cell together. Ah. Ah, ah would you look at that? Why, why would they? She was coming around, she's a corroborator. Elvis, meanwhile, you are running down the hallway, away from a giant lizard man with a rifle, who's yelling, STOP! STOP RIGHT THERE! Down the end of the hallway, another lizard man and a bunch of tiny little police with tiny sticks all leap out ahead of you. There's no way forward. Oh god, not tiny sticks! Stop, put my hands up! Please just don't hit me with the tiny sticks! All the little cops run up and then they beat you with the tiny sticks. Oh god, ow, they hurt! They hurt! Oh, they got the bump! Oh, my knees! Oh, my finger bones! And Elvis, they drag you downstairs to your own brig cell next to Lowry, Mason, and their lady friend. One of the big lizard men stands out in front of you and he says, let's have a little dialogue. This giant lizard guy is built like a brick house. Tall, powerful, muscular. He's got a scar across his face. He gets out a notepad and a pen. The notepad is striped like a candy cane, and the pen is made to look like a piece of licorice. Listen here, you filthy alien. You'll never get me to talk. You may as well go back to Florida. I've never been to Florida. Is it nice? What, you shed your skin in your ears? I just told you I'd never talk! I'm not gonna tell you how nice Florida is! I'll tell you about Florida if you let me go. Okay, see, guy, tough guy, uh, I've already got you nailed. He's gonna blab everything. Florida is highly overrated. There are alligators there. Are we actually being let go if we blab because- Don't you dare, you're in the same jail cell with me. Me and my lady friend here will smack you good. Don't think we won't. Oh bafu! That's right, oh bafu! You watch yourself, Lowry. Okay, that one's name is Lowry. And I'm Elvis. Nice to meet you. Anyway, about Florida. So, you can go swimming, but I would recommend you stick only to pools. If you try and swim in waters, alligators sometimes get in them. Oh, come on, Elvis. Try and withhold something from him. He's got to torture you first. I've actually never been to Florida. I'm just telling him what I heard. Look, I'm not going to torture anybody. I doubt you goons know anything that I care about. Oh, that's just what you say before you come in here and step on my testicles. I'm not going to do that. If you did, it would be pointless for you to try. I've been trained to withstand having my testicles stepped on. I'm not going to step on your testicles. Well, why don't you just come in here and try, huh? You filthy lizard. Because what, what do you know that would make me want to step on your testicles? Uh, where would I even begin? Well, for example, one thing that might be useful is your food people, right? Well, I know all the queen's allergies. I know exactly what you can make that would kill her dead on the spot. Ah, but I won't tell you a thing unless you come in here and step on my testicles. Why is that a prerequisite? What, do you need me to tell you how to do your job? Well, can I just start with your name? Sure, it's Jimmy the Teapot. Is, is that his name, Jimmy the Teapot? Yeah, that's what I've been calling him, Jimmy the yeah. Teapot. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Jimmy the frickin' Teapot. All right, and Jimmy, who do you work for? China. Really, China? You don't look Chinese. That's because not only am I a secret agent, I'm also a secret Asian. Uh, I bet you've been waiting for that one all day. I wake for teeth, Pete! Down with candy! 
Man, another one from Teeth Peace? We will not stop sacrificing agents until you have been brought low! Okay, and how about you, t-shirt guy? Uh, you can put me down as freelance, I guess. I mean, were you hired, or you just broke in to get information? Independent. Yeah, we get a lot of those. Okay, uh, so the reason I ask is because we like to keep a running tally on how many spies get thwarted by the factory and who sends them in. Most of them get eaten by the first creature in the first room. Not a lot of them think to go up the molasses tunnels. That's, uh, the crazier ones usually go for that. And, uh, yeah, er everything after that, our engineers just got distracted and bored, so they, you know, it's not real effective. But, uh, anyway, here you are. Okay, no, wait, the, the guard dog I get, but how was the room full of birds supposed to stop us? Yeah, well, the thing about that is, is that the whole factory, the, the boss wants the whole factory to be designed in whimsy, and, uh, the bloompers... Those are the little guys that you've been seeing running around. They they do most of the design, and they act up all the time. Every now and then, you just got to hit them with a stick. And I don't know what they've done, but they, they have always done something. So, keeps them in line. How'd you get that scar, alligator man? What, this? Don't worry about it. Tell you what. You tell me how you got that scar, and I'll tell you everything I know about the Chinese defense industry. We are a candy factory. What do you expect me to do with Chinese defense secrets? You're supposed to use them to get favors with the Chinese government. If they don't cooperate, you leak their secret. What am I doing your job for you? Oh, okay. That actually is pretty clever. I will make a note of that. Of course, you're not going to learn anything unless you come in here and step on my testicles. Again with this. I didn't make the spy rules. That's how it is. You got to torture me. Okay, well, for now, I'm going to just put you down as independent. And, and that's it. I'm done talking to you guys. What? That was terrible banter. Come back here. Come back here! He leaves, you hear the door close, and now it's just you guys. I have never been held captive before, but that guy is setting a pretty high bar for captors. I've had better. Did the better ones let you go? No, the better ones ran lasers in between my legs, then slowly inched them upward towards my crotch. Why not at your head and just get it over with? Oh, you have no sense of theatrics. Well, regardless, did that guy take your stuff away? I don't know, Paul, did he take my stuff away? Well, you're handcuffed, but you still have your gun. Ah, oh, perfect. All right, work to get my hands out in front of me. Okay, give me contortion. Here we go. Okay, yeah, you get your hands out in front of you, you slip them out underneath your feet. Okay, pull out my gun, lean around the jail cell, and then shoot Elvis! Hey! I warned you, you fool! I think by my count that you're out of ammo. Oh, oh, well that is just the nerve! Is this I'm what I get? I can't believe, I could have sworn I had you a know, few You know, I thought when we went into this, would we you would have professional up standards, I, I and jail put us back on a team. I said I'd kill you if I saw you again, I, I never go back well, on I my word. I see word. how it goes. Well, well, guess what? He didn't take away your gun. You know what he also didn't do? He didn't take away my shoes. Well, of course not. Why would he take your shoes? The same reason they take away all your things when you're put in prison. In this case, because I have a bomb in my shoes. Oh. Yeah, the heels of my shoes actually have C4 inside them. I could just pry those out and make another bomb, kill us all. Is there any way that you could use less C4 and, I don't know, just blow up the cell doors? Yes, Lowry's right. I like your spunk, but I prefer a plan where I live. Mm, I could. But I only have enough electronics and stuff to make one more bomb, so the rest of it would go to waste. Well, I mean, you'd live to use it again later, right? I don't know. I don't feel like I'm going to get out of here. This might be my last chance. Before you can get too far into that idea, the doors open again, and you hear the squeaking of a wheel. The lizard man from before is pushing a wheelchair, and sitting in it is a small little man in a suit and a top hat. He says, Sorry, gentlemen, I wasn't here to say hello in the first place. I... I'm Charlie Chonkless, world-famous candy genius! What are you dressed up for, Chonkless? You having a party? Oh, uh, this? No! I have too many spies coming in here wearing black ties and suits, and I don't like feeling underdressed! Ah, well now I understand the molasses. Yes, that's right, you're a quick one! You come in covered in molasses, and I guarantee I'm the prettiest one at the ball! That's very dirty, Chonkless. You're the one who's dirty! You're covered in molasses, you filthy espionage cheater! Mr. Chonkless, I am already rapidly losing confidence in your good nature, but I would just like to say, uh... Shut up! I'll ask you when you want to ask me questions! Okay. Did you want to ask me questions? Would you give me forthcoming answers? No! You, Mr. Chonkless, are responsible for more destroyed teeth than I can possibly count! You have ruined childhood, sir! Why don't you come over here and fight me like a man, huh? I'll kill you! Ah, oh, it's another one from Teeth Piece. Why do you people have so many members? Because straight teeth are beautiful! 
We have very lovely spokespeople. I guess that makes sense. We gotta get the bloopers. We gotta get some makeup on our bloopers or something. Make them all look sexy. The reptile says, uh, we don't let anyone see the bloopers, sir. All right. Well, we gotta stack up a couple of bloopers on top of each other and put them in a wig so they look like a sexy lady. And no one will know. I'll get R&D right on that, sir. You'll never get away with this, Chonkless. Yeah, get away, get away with what? Well, getting molasses on my suit, for one. And for another, calling yourself a candy genius when you're so obviously just a candy eccentric. How dare you? I am a candy genius. If I weren't, why, why would all the bloopers be working for me? Hmm? I don't know, Chonklish. Why don't you tell me? I will tell you. It's because I provide them lodging and food, and if they don't do work, they don't eat, and they have to sleep in the... Where do they sleep? We execute them, sir. In a shallow grave, then! Anyone could shoot a bloomper in the back of the head. Why, look at them. They're, they're only like three feet tall. Doesn't make you a genius. Well, then, how come no one else thought of it, hmm? I suppose you got me there. That's right. Well, anyway, so long as you're all here and you're looking around, I suppose you wanted a tour. I want to go home. No, no going home. Only the tour. Would you like to go on a tour? Do we have a choice? Uh, yeah, you could also sleep where all the bloopers who don't work sleep. In a shallow grave. Yes, that's what I'm hinting at. God, it's so hard being a genius. Everyone keeps up so slow. Wait, I think I shot a bloomper. Pretty sure. Does that make me a genius, too? Well, it makes you smarter than the bloopers. Do you want the tour or no? Give me the tour, Chonkless. I want to see each and every one of your evil machinations. I'm going to catalog them in my brain, and then I'm going to stab them all to death in my brain. Yeah, okay, you do that as long as it makes you enjoy the tour. All right, all right, make sure they're all handcuffed and let them out. The big reptilian alien unlocks your cages and then lets you guys out. He says, follow me. And he begins to push Charlie Chonkless along. All right, gentlemen, I know at least 300 different types of foot-based kung fu and probably about 10 or 20 types of foot-based karate. I can hear you. Don't be doing karate back there. I'll have you know that the only way out of this place requires knowing how to play a specific musical tune. Do any of you play an instrument? No, how would I learn to play an instrument after spending all those hours learning 200 forms of foot-based kung fu? I learned to play recorder in school. I know how to beatbox, you filthy monster. Well, unless you can play an entire rendition of Camp Town Races on a penny whistle, you'll never leave this place. And that's just one of the songs you'll know. There are checkpoints. Well, do go on then, Chonkless. No, I already gave you one hint. One of them's Camp Town Races. But if you play the wrong song, the entire thing lights up like a furnace and you'll die. Very well noted. Charlie Chonkless is wheeled down a very long series of hallways. Oddly long, he doesn't stop to show you anything. Hey, Chonkless, I just want to say this is a pretty crap tour. The tour hasn't started yet, you idiots. We're getting to it. Now, here we are. You come up to a set of blast doors. They open up, and they reveal what appears to be a very small flying saucer. All right, everybody aboard. This is where the tour begins. What is this, a teeth rotting machine? No, it's a flying saucer, you numbskull. Do you not watch cartoons? Cartoons rot the mind as well as candy rots teeth. Well, just shut up and get on board. It's gonna, the tour's gonna start. Come on. You won't be the first man to try to launch me into space, Chonkless. Though most people tie me to a rocket. Well, You know, I, usually it's... like spread eagle, like a woman ready to receive my crotch. Just sit down and get buckled in. It'll, it'll be bumpy on the way out, okay? God. Fine, but I'm not wearing a sheet belt. Look, I'm, I'm not going to supervillain you on this, okay? It would be faster to shoot you in the back of the head. Just get on the ship. I don't want to be shot in the back of the head. I guess I sit down. Shoot me. What? I said shoot me. I won't go along with a candy tyrant. Hey, uh, Elvish, don't you have a bunch of C4 in your shoes? What? Oh, uh, yes. What? Why? Well, can you rig it up while we're inside the spaceship? Oh, uh, yeah, I suppose, if no one is paying attention to me. You're looking at the number one master of creating distractions. All right, great. Wink, wink. Uh, never mind about the shooting. I don't want to be shot in the head anymore. This guy talked me out of it. I was sad, but now I feel better. Okay, wait, whatever. Go sit down. Everybody sits down in the ship, I guess. The doors close. And you feel the thing begin to vibrate. There's some G-forces at first, but then it quickly levels out. A screen comes on and you see Earth fading away, rapidly and more rapidly, until it looks like a tiny little star. And then it fades away. So just like that, we're in space, huh? Yeah, if it were a whole dramatic thing, who'd, who'd want to even bother? Okay, okay, I'm ready, I'm ready, do the thing. So, gentlemen, you're all buckled in, right? Safety first! Well, I'm not. I just get up and I'm gonna sit down in the big lizard guy's lap. So listen up, big boy. How come you didn't want to torture my crotch? 
Okay, man, could you please get out of my lap? No, I want to have a conversation. Let's talk about my crotch and, and what's so repellent about it to you. I'm going to be honest, it's it's really kind of a you thing. You know, a lot of people say that, but they're usually just being coy. Okay, give me a presence roll, and then Elvis, give me stealth. Okay. Uh, the lizard guy, like, tries to push you off of him, and then Chonkless goes, Oh, come on, just tell him what you don't like about his crotch. Give him details so he really feels put down and he leaves you alone about it. And the lizard guy goes, Okay, well, I haven't seen your crotch, but from what I can tell, I mean, just, like, I don't really like how forward you are. Um, you're a human, not really a lizard person. See, none of those things are a no. Well, no. I'm telling you no. Well, with your lips, sure, but what about your heart? Yep, heart. Also, no. What about your soul? Pretty sure soul, too. I mean, you could check with your body. I mean, I've done a quick inventory. Everything's coming back. No. All flashing red lights. No. I don't know. I'm still not convinced. Sir, I don't know what to do. Now tell him you're in a relationship. But I'm not. Well, just tell him that you are. It doesn't matter. Lie to him. Uh, I'm in a relationship. Your lover doesn't have to know. Uh, I find you hideous. You, you look like crap. Some people call that a hot mess. I mean, I, 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 I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, sir. What, what do I do? Okay, all, all right. I've got a plan. Make yourself throw up. What? Make yourself throw up. Stick your finger down your throat. Uh, just throw up on him, S sir. I... It's how vultures defend themselves. Use the power of your inner vulture. Uh, okay, you're the genius. I'm gonna warn you right now. I'm into every kind of bodily fluid. Sir, sir. All right, all right, bodily fluids are out. Okay, fine. Look over your shoulder. How's Elvis doing? Okay, over the hill and around the loop and all the through and then we get the bunny ears and there we go. That's not going to blow up while we're still on the ship, right? I don't know. It has a timer. I'm going to set it for five minutes. If we're not out of here in five minutes, then it's too long of a flight anyway. That seems like a really short time, five minutes. Well, then you assemble the bomb. Uh, Miss, Mr. Chonkless, about how long is this tour of space going to last? Uh, about five minutes. Why? Aren't you enjoying it? No reason. Five minutes is good. I've charmed women in less than five minutes. Sir, would it be okay if I just got physical with him? I thought that's what you're trying to avoid. I mean, like, physically violent. Can I just physically remove him from myself? Oh. Well, it doesn't seem very sporting to the whole game that's being played here. Our little game of cat and mouse has rules, darling. Besides, I like to be manhandled. Okay. Okay. That's it. The lizard stands up which kind of throws you out of his lap. He drags you to your chair. He kind of wraps you around with the seatbelt. And he says, that's, that's where you're going to stay, okay? For the rest of the trip, five more minutes, that's all. Elvis, just before he turns around, you finish with your bomb. Okay, attach it under my seat. Ugh, tie those bonds a little tighter, baby. I'm an escapist. You are one of the worst international spies I've ever had to deal with. Well, good, that means I'll be memorable. Oh, my God. He goes and he sits down. I suppose you guys spend the rest of the five minutes just watching space fly by. Yeah, so so here's the tour. To your right, you'll see space kind of, kind of empty in the grand scheme. But soon a large planet pulls into view. It gets closer and closer as you guys come closer and closer to it until eventually the ship plants down on that planet. Before we land, I'm going to use my contortion to get out of these bonds. Okay, I'll give it to you. Well, here we are, everybody out. Oh, look, your, your little friend is free. Get off the ship. The lizard boots you guys out, all three of you and your blooper lady friend. The door closes, the ship rises up into the air, and boom! Explodes. <laughs> I did it! I achieved my goal! Oh yeah! <laughs> Shame you guys, I, I, I totally screwed. Yes, well, I suppose the best man won this time. Uh, yeah, uh, I did have the purest goals. Where is this? The Bloomper lady says, Bloompa. Oh, I guess that makes sense. So darling, you got any family around here we can crash with? Eh, uh, mitoko. I'm going to assume that's a yes. Because otherwise we probably die out here. Well, gentlemen, I tell you what, you can crash with me and the missus for a little while. We're going to get married, by the way. Oh. Topu. I'm uh, glad you like the idea. Oh. oh, this is the worst. And that's the game. You guys spend the remainder of your days in sort of a weird sitcom family situation with the blooper aliens and each other. Oh, this game ran a little shorter than most of them do. It was also a little on rails. Yeah, that's the problem with trapping you guys inside a building and you're just trying to navigate the place. I mean, I shot a bird. You did kill that bird. And we got the man. You did kill Chonkless. Yeah, that one was kind of a gimme. Seemed appropriate, though. So who's got the next game? Well, I've actually got another one in mind, but you guys are going to have to make characters after D&D &D classes. Why? 
What level? Level five, but not using the D&D system. We're going to keep to our usual system. Uh, it's going to be like copying forms. What's the premise? You guys go into dungeons and you fight skeletons. That is not anything to go on. You love fighting skeletons. You love fighting skeletons so much. Okay, Jesus, I love to fight skeletons. It's going to be great. You're going to kill so many skeletons. Get excited. That was the Charlie Chonkless Chocolate Factory. If you enjoyed that, I'd really appreciate your support on Patreon. You can find me under Don Somewhere. I also have a website called donsomewhere.com where you can find some of the other things I've done on the internet over the years. Again, that is donsomewhere.com or you can find me under Don Somewhere on Patreon. If you follow me there, sometimes I post stuff early. If I get it done on time, I do my best. But anyway, though, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you enjoy the next one and have a wonderful week.